Shalom on this Sabbath day. Happy Welcome Sabbath. to the Philadelphia Assembly. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Today is the fourth day of the fourth month of the year 57, uh, 5782. Now, we had a full moon on Wednesday night, which we began our sixth month, uh, fourth month, I'm sorry, of the year by that, by the full moon being the new moon. So if you're questioning our dates, that was when the month started, was Wednesday daytime. It started Tuesday night when the sun went down. Okay? So that's where we are with that. Today is also the 18th day of June 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. We're going to continue our expository teaching of the Apocrypha books. And we're going to be uh, continuing. It's going to be part six of Ecclesiasticus. And that would be Yahusha son of Sirach. Okay, so it's part six, and it's we're going to start in chapter 35. But we're going to stand and face Jerusalem, the place where Yahuwah chose to place his name there, and open in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. Father, we thank you for another wonderful week of life here on your creation. Father, we ask uh, that you would continue to keep your hedge of protection around us, and we thank you for providing our day-by-day -day needs. And Father, we ask that you would heal those that are sick. We pray that you would give comfort to those that have lost loved ones. And Father, we most of all, we ask that you would send an extra anointing of your spirit today, Father, your Ruach, to teach us all things. Father, as we go to this teaching, this expository teaching, of Yahusha, son of Sirach, we ask that you give us understanding, Father. And Father, give me the correct words to say as I expound upon it. Father, let them be your words and not mine. And again, Father, we ask that you would anoint those that are here today, that are hearing your word live, and those that hear it later on YouTube. We ask it all in your precious son, Yahusha, or Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, <coughs> Getting better every day with my leg. Praise the Father Yahuwah for that. I'm getting, I am getting better. Keep Brother Eric Burkholz, uh co-pastor here or co-teacher here, in your prayers as he's having a problem with his knees. Okay, his knee, his was he a right knee? Your left? Yeah, your right. Yeah, your backwards knees. <laughs> I have to think. Okay, so. Pray that he doesn't have to have surgery or scope like mine did. So just pray that Father heals it. And anyone else that we know that's sick, we know that uh, another close uh, uh, a close member of this assembly that gathers with us on Sabbath meetings lost his niece yesterday. We ask that you send him the peace that passes all understanding. Again, we're ready now to go ahead and take off with... Uh, Again, Ecclesiasticus, or Yahusha, son of Sirach, part 6, chapter 35. Starts out by saying, He who keeps the Torah, okay, makes many offerings. Now, we know the original offering, they gave all the physical sacrifices, and we still give certain physical sacrifices. We don't do the blood sacrifices, but we still give forth you know, of our increase to the Father. And that is part of showing our faith. But these physical offerings and tithes that they gave back then were all pointing towards these spiritual sacrifice and physical tithings that we still yet do today. Okay? He says, He who keeps the Torah makes many offerings. In other words, according to the commandments. He who ne heeds you see what it's saying? He who heeds or hears the commandments sacrifices a peace offering. Everything that we do to the Father is like a peace offering between us and Him. We want that peace with the Father. Verse 2, He who returns a kindness offers fine flour. See, that was the original sacrifices. Remember they made those unleavened cakes and they used fine flour to do it. And it's giving you that example. He who returns a kindness. Someone's kind to you and you returns a kindness. Offers fine flour. To keep from wickedness is pleasing.
to Yahuwah. Okay, so to refrain yourself from unrighteousness, to forsake wickedness is pleasing to Yahuwah. And to forsake unrighteousness is atonement. Okay, and we know uh, atonement is talking about a redeeming. In other words, it is to save us. Verse 4. Do not appear before Yahuwah empty-handed. Okay? And he said three times a year they would come up to keep the feast and not to come before Him empty-handed. This is the talk about the same thing, but we do this in a, as much in a spiritual sense as we still do some of these things as physical. For all these things are to be done because of the commandment. So we do these things as obedience to the commandment, but we do it because we want to be pleasing before Yahuwah. Verse 6, The offering of a righteous man anoints the altar. Okay? There's a lot said in that. That's deep. You know, we now are the temple and, 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 and our heart is like the altar. Okay? So the offerings of a righteous man anoints the, offer, the, the altar. And it is pleasing odor, and its pleasing odor rises before the Most High, or Yahuwah. Verse 7, the sacrifice of a righteous man is acceptable. Okay? Because if a, a righteous man would be, be keeping and obeying the commandments because he wants to be pleasing before the Father. And the memory of it will not be forgotten. Honor Yahuwah generously. Okay? And do not restrict the first fruits of your hands. Or don't hold back the first fruits of your hands. That's talking about tithing, folks. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like to hear about that. But that is what that's talking about. Don't hold back the first fruits of your hands. And that means it needs to be the first fruits. Not the last thing that we think of, but the first thing. With every gift, show a cheerful face. Don't give begrudgingly. You know, like it hurts you. And dedicate your tithe with gladness. See? And some people say, well, that's just for Jacob or, or, or the physical Israel. Not so. Uh, One-tenth of everything belongs to the Most High. Okay? And that's what this is talking about here. When he says a tithe. A, and dedicate your tithe with gladness. Be glad to give it. Don't be begrudging. Verse 10. Give to the Most High as He has given you. I, I added you. As He has given. And as generously as your hand has found. For Yahuwah is the one who repays. So, if you begrudge everything you give Yahuwah, remember He repays one way or the other. Okay? And He will repay you sevenfold. If you repay him wickedly, he's going to repay you sevenfold wickedly, just like going to bless you. Verse 12. Do not offer him a bribe. See, a lot of people think they give a tithe unto the Lord or they give a peace offering or a free will offering that if I do something good like this, he's going to reward me. No, he's going to look at that as a bribe. Okay? If that's your mindset. Okay? Oh, well, if I give a tenth then I should get back ten times or sevenfold, as it just said. Okay? If you look at it like that, it says, do not offer him a bribe, for he will not accept it. And do not trust to an unrighteous sacrifice. See, it's all about your attitude. If your attitude is not right when you're making that gift, it's an unrighteous gift. It's not going to be acceptable to the Most High. For Yahuwah is the judge, not us. Okay, not what anybody else says, but Yahuwah. And with Him is no what? Partiality. No favoritism. Okay, He treats everybody the same. He will not show partiality in the case of a poor man, no more than He will a rich, and I added that. And He will listen to the prayer of one who is wronged. Remember how many times you know the nations end up wronging Israel? Father heard that, and He revenged them. Okay? But when they were wrong, he didn't keep their, take their side. He will not ignore the supplication of the fatherless. Okay, He's not going to uh, 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 ignore the fatherless. If they're in need, he's going to help them. Supplication would be like prayers or, or, or crying out. Nor the widow when she pours out her story. Okay, So 
when it, when this when when one pours out their story and they've been being oppressed, the Most High is going to hear it. Do not the tears? This is a question here. Do not the tears of the widow run down her cheek as she cries out against him who has caused them to fall? Think about that. You cause another person to cry, the Father knows that. He feels that right then. We got to be careful what we do, what we say, how that's going to do, you know, affect someone else. Verse 16. He who serves, that means what we do for the Most High, is pleasing to Yahuwah, will be accepted. He who serves is pleasing to Yahuwah, will what? Be accepted of Yahuwah. And his prayer will reach to the heavens or to the Shamayim, to the clouds. The Father's going to hear it. The prayer of the humble pierces the heavens or the Shamayim or the clouds. And he will not be consoled until it reaches Yahuwah. Someone that's faithful and truly believes, he's going to keep praying and keep asking until he knows it's reached the Most High. He will not desist until the Most High visits him, gives him an answer, and does justice for the righteous and executes judgment. In other words, till he sees the effects of Yahuwah doing what Yahuwah promised him to do. And Yahuwah will not delay, he will not hold back, he will answer, neither will he be patient with them that are oppressing others. He won't be patient with them till he crushes the loins of the unmerciful. And he will be faithful to do that. Now let me tell you something. There's coming an appointed time for that to happen. It happens now. You know, for the, a lot of times for a season, the wicked will prevail because the rain falls on the just and the unjust. But Yahuwah, it always comes around. It always comes around. Now, but there is an appointed time till he crushes the loins of the unmerciful and repays vengeance on the nations. Now he's talking about anybody other than Israel. Now what you've got to get in your understanding, it's not just physical Israel, it's anyone other than the commonwealth of Israel. Okay, because you have to take everything in count. You can't just take out the parts you like or dislike. Okay? Till he takes away the multitude of the insolent. You know what an insolent is? Disrespectful that insults, that's what he's talking about, and breaks the scepter of the unrighteous. You, you see them rise and fall. Nations rise and fall. And, and that Yahuwah's in control. He puts them in, he takes them out. But he does not have patience with the unrighteous. He will take them out quickly a lot of times. Till he repays every man, I added every, according to his deeds or his doings. Okay? Everybody at the great white throne judgment that wasn't in the first resurrection, okay, is going to have to stand before the Most High and answer for everything they did, both good and bad, before the Most High. And that's the appointed time. It's, it's going to talk more about this as we this appointed time as we get into chapter 36. And the works of men according to their devices. What does he mean by devices? the way they accomplish what they set out to do. That's your devices. Okay? If you set out to do something and you use evil devices to make something and you think you're doing something good, He's judging you also according to your devices. Okay? The way you had it. And He says, till He judges, we know when He's going to judge at that appointed time, the great white throne judgment, the cases of His people and makes them rejoice in His mercy. Now, that's what's going to happen at the white throne judgment. The ones that are allowed to come into the kingdom according to their deeds, those are going to be the, His people as well as those in the first resurrection. And, and they will all rejoice in His mercy because if they're in that great white throne judgment, that's His mercy if they continue into the kingdom. Verse 20, Mercy is as welcome when He afflicts them. In other words, His mercy is also welcome even when you're under afflictions. You've got to recognize that. As clouds of rain in the time of drought. A lot of times we're in afflictions and we're wondering why things are happening on like they are happening. Just wait. 
that is an affliction. When that passes, there's going to be a blessing. Chapter 36. Listen to what this says. It says, Have mercy upon us, O Yahuwah, the Elohim of all the land. Look upon us. And cause the fear of You to fall upon all the nations. Now, that's already begun, but it has not been fulfilled or finished. Okay? In that sense. Lift up Your hand against foreign nations. This is a prayer of Israel to lift up His hands that were against His people. And it's going to be the same for those that are grafted in. Okay? And let them see Your might. As in, you, it, in, as in us, you have been sanctified. In other words, by the deeds of the people, them keeping His Torah, His right rulings, that had set Yahuwah apart before them. See, that's just like back in Egypt when He sent those plagues on the, children of, on the sons of Egypt and He didn't do that upon the Israelites. That was to show the whole world, not just Israel, he, who He was and His might. And their deeds by obeying Yahuwah set Yahuwah apart. Listen to what it's saying here. So in them, be you magnified before us. Each one of us are magnified or set apart or brought up by, before everyone else by our deeds. And let them know you as you have known that there is no Elohim but Yahuwah. No Elohim, but you, O Yahuwah. Verse 6. Show signs. They're praying for Yahuwah to show signs anew and work further wonders. Make your hand and your right arm glorious. And he's talking about His Spirit that come down in the temple and illuminated the temple. Let's listen. Arouse your anger. And that's who went before Israel in that cloud of smoke in the, in, the, in the daytime, in that pillar of fire at night. And they fought for Him against the Egyptians when they chased Him into the Red Sea. Listen, arouse your anger and pour out your wrath. Destroy the adversary and wipe out the enemy. They're praying for that to happen. And, and, and in the end, that's what's going to happen at the Great White Throne Judgment. But you have to wait on this next verse. Hasten the day and remember the appointed time. And that's talking about the Day of Judgment on the, on the Day of Atonement at the end of the Millennial Reign. That's the appointed time for all this. And let people recount your mighty deeds that you made over all those things. People are going to recount everything He's done. Verse 9, Let him who survives be consumed in the fiery wrath and may those who harm your people meet destruction. The fiery wrath is on that great white throne judgment when everyone that enters that lake of fire, and he says, and let your, and let your people meet destruction or see destruction. Verse 10, crush the heads of the rulers of the enemy. That's all the wicked people, and that's not going to happen until that appointed time. Who say there is no one but ourselves. In other words, they don't believe in a God. And they're in charge. Gather all the tribes of Yaakov. Okay? And that includes those that are grafted in. And give them their inheritance as it, as it was in the beginning when Israel first received the promised land. Verse 12, Have mercy, O Yahuwah, upon you, on the people called by your name upon Israel, whom you have likened to a firstborn son. Believe me, any one of us that's in the commonwealth of Israel are His firstborn sons. We are sons of Elohim right now. Okay, Have pity on the city of your sanctuary. Talking about Jerusalem, obviously. He says, Jerusalem, the place of your rest. See, that's where that Spirit came down in that temple that Solomon built every Sabbath day, every holy day, and other times too. Okay? So that Jerusalem is the place of His rest. Verse 14, Fill Zion with a celebration of your wondrous deeds and your temple with your glory. And His glory is His Ruach, His Ruach HaKadosh, His Spirit. And that's what filled His temple then. Verse 15, Bear witness to those whom you did create in the beginning. You created all mankind starting with Adam, okay, or Adam. 
and fulfill the prophecies spoken of in your name. All the prophets since the very beginning, he's, they're asking to fulfill those that are in His name. Verse 16, Reward those who wait for you and let your prophets be found trustworthy. We know a lot of the prophets spoken of by Jeremiah and Ezekiel were not reliable or trustworthy. They told the people what they wanted to hear. This prayer is to let your prophets be trustworthy. And in the latter days, His real true teachers or prophets will be trustworthy. Verse 17, Listen, O Yahuwah, to the prayers of your servants, whether they be of the physical nation of Israel or grafted in, according to the blessing of Aaron of your people. That blessing from the priest to the people. And all who are on the earth will know that you are Yahuwah, the Elohim of the ages. They translate it correctly here. The King James most of the time translates world for ages. Check me out. Don't take my word for it. If you go look at world most of the time, or forever and ever, it'll say, it actually says the ages. Either one. Verse 18. The stomach will take any food. And that means if you sit down and eat a pork chop or you eat a lamb, your stomach doesn't care. It's going to digest it and the rest is going to go out in a drop. Okay? Yet one food is better than another. How do we know that? Leviticus chapter 11. That tells us to know what, really what is food and what is not food. Okay? Verse 19. As the palate, that means the taste in your mouth, the kinds of game, in other words, you could tell one thing from another, so an intelligent mind detects false words. Now, the, the really, a, a real intelligent mind is one that's impregnated with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, and then you have the mind that, that our Messiah had, okay, when He walked here on earth. But if you don't have that Father's Spirit dwelling in you, you're not going to be truly an intelligent man. Okay, you will be able to detect false words from true words. Verse 20, a perverse mind, what's a perverse mind? One that is of the flesh and rejects the calling of the Spirit. A perverse mind will cause grief, but a man of experience will pay him back. Okay? A woman will accept any man. That's not talking about a woman of, of Elohim, okay? but a, a, just a straight up woman will accept any man. That's a statement. But one daughter of the Most High, I added that, is better than another. Okay? A woman's beauty gladdens the countenance, the look on, pe on, pe on faces, okay? And surpasses every human desire. Okay, the beauty of a woman surpasses that of gold, of all those things. It's the highest of all the desires. It could be good or it could be lust, okay? Let's continue. If kindness and humility mark her speech, big if, isn't it? If kindness and humility mark her speech, her husband is not like other men. You know, he's going to respect his wife. He's going to uh, protect her, take care of her. Okay? He who acquires a wife gets his best possession. A helper fit for him and a pillar of support where there is no fence. Now think about that. What's he talking about? Where there's no fence. Where there's no boundaries. Okay? If you, a person has to have boundaries. Okay? And, and wives are no different. Okay? And listen. Where there is no fence or no boundaries, the poverty will be plundered. Okay? You understand? Okay? If the wife doesn't have boundaries, her... her uh, Whatever will be plundered. I'm not searching for a word, but you know where I'm going with that. <coughs> and where, listen, and where there is no wife, a man will wander about and sigh <coughs> from one woman to the next. That's what it's talking about. Let's keep in context. For who will trust a nimble robber? I, I know people that's been 60 years old and they were still playing Casanova. Okay, that's, listen to what's being said that skips from city to city, and that's saying from woman to woman. 
Okay? So who will trust a man that has no home? And that's not talking about a house, okay? That's talking about somebody that you can see is a Casanova and he's skipping from one woman to another. He has no home and he has that's the reason, okay? Because he's still living like that. And lodges wherever night's, night finds him. I'm trying to remember a name of a song that would, remember the song, The Night Owls? Little River Band, I believe, did that song, The Night Owls. Listen to that sometime. They're out there still, The Night Owls, and some of them are 50, 60 years old, still chasing women and moving from city to city, just like this is talking about. Verse 37, now he's going to shift and he's going to start talking about friends, real friends, and ones that might be pretenders. 37, he says, every friend will say, I too am a friend. And they will. They'll tell you they're your friend even if they're not, okay? But some friends are friends only in name. Okay, they'll say, that's my friend such and such, you know? Is it not a grief to the death when a companion and friend turns to an enemy? You couldn't do anything worse to a man that you he was your true friend and then you become his enemy. I mean, that cuts you to something you don't ever get over with. Okay? Verse 3. Oh, evil imagination. He's talking about the heart of man when he says, oh, evil imagination, minus the spirit of the Most High. Why were you formed? You know, that's that flesh, that lust, all those things that control the human mind. To cover the land with deceit. That's what flesh does. Some companions, that's not real friends, rejoice in the happiness of a friend. Someone can be your companion without being your friend, but a real friend rejoices in the happiness of a friend. But in time of trouble are against him. See, you got companions like that. I remember my mom used to say, yeah, you got a lot of friends. Wait till you run out of money. You ever notice how quickly... You, I mean, I remember back in the days when, you know, you drinking with your buddies or whatever, and then, you know, you, they'd be your best buddy till you didn't have another dollar, and then they were gone. That's what this is talking about, okay? And I don't care if people know that I did that when I was younger. I did a lot of things when I was younger that I don't do now, okay? But this is how people are. I've always been the one that would give you my last dollar. You know, that's just who I am. Verse 5, some companions help a friend for their stomach's sake. What's that mean? They'll help you. They're looking for repayment. Okay, they're looking for a way that they're going to get ahead. And in the face of a battle, take up the shield against you. That's what it's talking about. When, it, when a battle comes, they're not going to be on your side. Do not forget a friend in your heart. Don't do it. You know, no matter what they do, don't forgive a friend in your heart. And be not unmindful of him in your wealth. So when you get rich, don't forget your friends. Verse 7. This is talking about those that claim to be counselors. Okay? And as if you are a servant of the Most High, you should be a counselor. First in the Scriptures and then as friend. This is what we were just talking about. It says, every counselor praises counsel. A real counselor praises counsel. In other words, if, I'm, if you're in the wrong and somebody comes to you in, a, in the right spirit and tries to counsel you, you, you you're you going to praise counsel. But some give counsel in their own interest. In other words, they'll give you advice that's in their best interest, not in the friends that they're counseling. Be wary of a counselor. In other words, someone that gives you counsel. You know, think about, is he doing this in my best interest or his own? And learn first what is his interest. For he will take thought for himself. It's not my words. Reading the book here. Okay? At least he cast the lot against you and tell you your way is good. In other words, he'll go along with you because he thinks that's going to help his purpose, cause. And in, verse, in this next part of this verse, and then in, in, in this translation it says aloof. A lot of people don't know what the word aloof means, okay? Aloof means uncaring, cold, distant, okay? So he's saying here that they'll, 
least, in other words, they're going to do it to increase their own good and then stand uncaring and cold, okay, to see what will happen to you, to see if they're going to gain from your loss. Do not consult with one who looks at you suspiciously. If he doesn't trust you, don't take counsel from him. It says, hide your counsel from those who are jealous of you. In other words, don't say anything. Just be quiet. If they're jealous of you, you're not going to be able to say one thing that's going to help them. Okay? Do not consult with a woman about her rival. No different than a man. You're just using that for an, uh, an example. Okay? If a woman has a woman that's another woman that's her rival, don't go to the, one of them women to ask about the other one. Because they're going to give you bad testimony. Just like you have some people come to your house and they'll tell you something bad about another servant of the Most High and they'll give you every reason in the world why that other servant's bad. I don't take judgment like that. Okay, I listen and I don't realize that there's two sides to every story because you can't do that because those people are probably their rival if you know what the word rival means. And it says, or take counsel, I, I had to take counsel, or consult with a coward about war. You know, because a coward doesn't want anything about war. With a merchant about bartering. A merchant is someone that sells to get gain, so you don't talk to him about trading, okay? Or with a buyer about selling. If this guy's a buyer, you're asking him about selling, he's going to be trying to take advantage of you with a grudging man about gratitude. See how all this makes sense? Or with a merciless or an unmer uh, some man without mercy about kindness. You see this man has no mercy on anybody. Why ask him about kindness? With a, with a lazy or idler, somebody that doesn't want to work, and you know that, about any work. Or with a man hired for a year about completing his work with a lazy servant about a task. Pay no attention to these in any matter of counsel, but stay constantly with a godly or righteous man whom you know to be a keeper of the commandments. See, that's who you want to take your counsel from. Someone you know is a keeper of the commandments whose life is in accord with your life. Soul, it says here. In other words, he's got something that same like interest of you as you do, and who will sorrow with you if you fail. And establish the counsel of your own heart, for no one is more faithful to you than it is. For a man's life sometimes keeps him better informed than seven watchmen sitting high on a watchtower. Your own life, your own experiences. Okay, that's what it's talking about. And besides all this, pray to the Most High <coughs> all the time, unceasingly. I added all that. That He may direct your way in truth. When I first got converted, <coughs> when I realized, well, at, at least when I first got converted, I thought, that I had been so deceived by everybody how they hid the Sabbath day and all the blessings that come along that with that from me. I was so angry. I didn't talk to anybody for about a week. I didn't know what to do. I, I just felt like I'd been betrayed. But then, I, when I thought about it and realized that they too had been betrayed and, and, and lied to, I was able to get past that. But I prayed to the Most High every day after that, asking Him to give me the truth and that His Word was right and everything else was wrong. And that's where we got to get to. That He, Yahuwah, may direct our way in truth. Do not trust men to, in, 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 in things of the matter of the Scripture. Listen to what they say but prove all things by the Word of God and trust in the Most High to direct you in that path. Amen. Six, reason in the beginning of every work. Reason is in the beginning of every work. In other words, you've got to sit down and plan 
before you ever do a job. You know, if you don't sit down and kind of lay a plan out in your mind before you do it, it's, it's not going to come out right, okay? If you just do it willy-nilly. Let's reason in the beginning every, of every work. And counsel precedes every undertaking. Uh, in, other, in other words, if you reason and you still know that you're falling short in that, you got to seek counsel. But who do you seek counsel from? Someone that has done the work. Okay? Verse 17, as a clue to changes of heart. See? Because that's what it's all about is a real change of heart. For turns or for fortune appear. Good and evil, life and death. And it is the tongue that continually rules them. So in other words, when you meet someone, don't try to do all the talking. Let them talk. Because they're going to tell you what kind of person they are within the first day or two if you're around them very much. Okay, just listen to how they talk, what they talk about. You'll understand what they're all about. Whether it be fortune, whether it be good, whether it be evil, whether it be a good life or death. Okay? And then it can, the tongue. And it is the tongue that continually rules them, every person. A man may be shrewd, okay, and he might be able to deceive you for a while, okay, he might be able to say some good things, and the teacher of many, and yet be unprofitable to his own to himself. A man skilled in words may be hated. He will be destitute of all food, for grace was not given him by Yahuwah. Okay? Since he is lacking in all wisdom, a man may be wise to his own advantage, in other words, to build up his own self, and the fruits of his understanding may be trustworthy on his lips. Maybe, may not be. A wise man will instruct his own people, and the fruits of his understanding will be trustworthy. Because why? He cares about his own people. Okay, if they're truly his people. A wise man will have praise heaped upon him. Because people know what you, you know, I, we used to have an old saying, we had a saying, I'm not going to say it's an old saying, it might be. He said, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So you might know a whole lot of stuff, but if you don't care about nobody, they're not going to lift you up and praise you. Okay? Listen to a person. Let them speak. Let them tell them what kind of person they are. Because people really don't know, care how much you know till they know how much you care. A wise man will have praise heaped upon him. And all will see him, all who see him will call him happy. Okay? The life of a man is numbered by days. Yep. Everybody's got different amount of days. Some people live long, some people don't. But the days of Israel are without number. Wow. The true people of Israel. Not the just the blood Israel, but the true Israelites number are their days are without number. That's because they're going to continue on into the new heaven and new earth. He who is wise among his people will inherit confidence. See, our Messiah spoke with confidence. And any of us that are teaching the word of Elohim should be speaking with confidence. Okay? And his name will what? Live forever. Verse 27, My son, test your life while you live. Hmm, how do you test your life while you live? See what is bad for it. And we know breaking His commandments are bad for it. And do not give it that. In other words, you know what's good and what's evil. Do what is good. For not everything is good for everyone. Isn't that true? And not every person enjoys everything. Do not have an insatiable, in, 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 in other words, an appetite that you can't fill. Okay? For any luxury, and no matter what it is, if it's something that you don't have to have, it's a luxury. Okay? So don't have an appetite for anything that you don't have to have that you can't fill. That's lust. Okay? And do not give yourself up to food, because it'll kill you if you're a glutton. 
For overeating brings sickness and gluttony leads to nausea. Many have died of gluttony, even though they might have called it diabetes or something else. But he who is careful to avoid it prolongs his life. Boy, isn't that the truth? 38. And it's so easy to fall into that. Okay? 38. Honor the physician with the honor due him. Okay? This is talking about someone that helps to heal you, whether it be spiritually or physically, according to your need of him. For Yahuwah created him. See? And that's why nowadays, you know, I hear people all the time talk about all doctors, how wicked and evil. They're wicked and evil doctors, but remember who created them. The Most High did. Okay? For healing comes from where? The Most High. So if someone's able to do some type of a surgery, it's because the Most High has provided that for them to be able to perform that. Because all healing comes from the Most High. And he will receive a gift from the king. Talking about the physician. Well, he will receive a, king, a gift from the gift, king. The skill of the physician lifts up his head. And in the presence of great men, he is admired. Tell me that's not true. Yahuwah created medicines from the earth. And let me tell you something. All these medicines that they use right now, if you trace it back, they come from the earth. Now, they've made synthetic ones and manipulate them, but originally all those medicines came from the earth. And a sensible man will not despise them. Okay? Was not water made sweet with a tree? Yes, it was. And this could be speaking of a maple tree, and there's other trees that give syrup. In order that his power might be known. Yahuwah's power. Okay? And he gave skill to men that he might be honored in his marvelous works. So any skill or thing like that, that all comes from the Most High. By them he heals and takes away pain. Okay, the only problem is nowadays that money's taken over the, the physicians. And now the insurance companies and things, they're running the show. That's the bad part. The pharmacist and this would be a apothecary, what they would have called it in English from the Hebrew, makes of them a compound. Okay? He worked, he, his works will never be finished. And from him, health is upon the face of the earth, the apothecary. Okay? They got pharmacist in here, but it's apothecary. Verse 9, my son, when you are sick, do not be negligent, but pray to Yahuwah, and He will heal you. Give up your faults, and direct your hands aright, and cleanse your heart from all sin. Offer a sweet-smelling sacrifice and a memorial portion of fine flour. Now this is all found in the Levitical law, okay, about how to make these fine flower offerings. But remember, those are a picture of spiritual offerings. And pour oil on your offering. Because that's like the Spirit being poured on you. That's an anointing. And as much as you can afford. And give the physician his place. Okay? Or his coming. His due. For Yahuwah created him. Let him not leave you, for there is need of him. There is a time when success lies in the hands of physicians, for they too will pray to Yahuwah that He should grant them success in diagnosis. And, and I've heard some of these doctors pray before they do surgery. They're not all atheists, guys. Some of them believe too. Okay? And I'm sure that they pray before they have to go and do surgery that Yahuwah will give them you know, success in their surgeries. So make sure you want are their diagnoses and in healing for the sake of preserving life. See, that's what their their job is, is to help preserve life and to do no harm. Okay? He who sins before his maker, may he fall into the care of a physician a physician. In other words, 
he that sins against his maker, he better hope he can find a physician because the Most High ain't going to heal him. Okay? My son, let your tears fall for the dead. This is advice. In other words, cry for those that die when they die. And as one who is suffering grievously, begin the, the, the laminate or cry, lay out his body with the, with the honor due him, and do not neglect his burial. Let your weeping be bitter and your wailing fervor. Observe the mourning according to his, his merit. And I, I mean, when these kings died of Israel, they laminated and cried for seven days. You know? And if somebody is a righteous person, we should be like that. You know, you try to hold back your tears when you lose somebody because you know they're gone. But that's part of re their respect is to wail and for men. Observe the mourning according to his merit, what he deserves. For one day or two to avoid criticism. Then be comforted for your sorrow. For sorrow results in death. In other words, if you let your grief get to you, you'll die right along with them. And sorrow of heart saps one's strength. In calamity, sorrow continues. And the life of the poor man weighs down his heart. You know, when you're a slave and you just work for one meal right after another, that works down your heart. Listen to what it says. Do not give your heart to sorrow. If you're in a situation that makes your life unhappy, do not give yourself to that. Don't just give up. Drive it away. Remember the end of life is coming. I added is coming. Do not forget there is no coming back in the flesh. You do the, you do the dead no good and you injure yourself by over grieving after someone's gone. Remember my doom for yours is like it. In other words, remember that I died, yours is coming. Yesterday it was mine and today it may be yours. I added may. 23. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance cease. I didn't quite picture everybody going back to the grave every year, does it? And laying down flowers, putting on wreaths. They're dead. Let it go. They'll be raised at one of the two resurrections. Okay? Continue with life and rejoice in every day that the Most High gives you because when it's gone, it's one less you have. Okay? Remember the, the doom or the end of the other man and remember you still have days to live. And be comforted for him when his spirit has departed, his breath has departed. Verse 24, The wisdom of the scribe depends on the opportunity of leisure. And he who has little business may become wise. In other words, he doesn't have too much time, too much to occupy his time. He might become wise. Okay, how can he become wise who handles the plow? If a guy's working every day and doing somebody else's business all the time, how's he going to have time to become wise? And how do you become wise? By the scripture. If you are busy handling the plow, how can you become wise? And who glories? or honors in the shaft of a goad. Now, and again, these are, uh, it's talking about too much work or someone that's controlled by work. Who drives oxen, that's, who dri that's a goad, the one that drives oxen, and is occupied with their work, and whose talk is about bulls. How's he going to become wise? He sets his heart on the plowing furrows because that's what he does. Okay? And he is careful about fodder for the heifers. So too is every craftsman and master workman who labors by night as well as by day. You don't have no time to become wise in the Scriptures. Those who cut the signets of seals, signets are, again, like seals, each is, di is diligent in making a great variety, someone that makes stamps or seals, he sets his heart on the painting of lifelike images. And he is careful to finish his work. 
so too is the smith sitting by the anvil, intent upon his handiwork in iron. Because that's what his focus is. That's his whole life, okay? Doesn't matter what we're talking about, whatever you set your life to. The breath of the fire melts his flesh. In other words, someone that's a blacksmith that works by the works metal. The breath of the fire melts his flesh and he wastes away in the heat of the furnace. He inclines his ear to the sound of the hammer and his eyes are on the pattern of the object that he's working on. He sets his heart on finishing his handiwork and he is careful to complete his decoration. So too is the potter sitting at the work and turning the wheel with his feet. He is always deeply concerned over his work and all his output is by number. In other words, he's counting how much he's making. He molds the clay with his arm and makes it pliable with his feet. Because he's pumping the pedal. Okay, that's why. Pumping that pedal. He sets his heart to finish the glazing and he is careful to clean the furnace. And all these rely upon their hands, and each is skillful in his own work. Without them, a city cannot be established. In other words, the workman's necessary, okay? But how's he going to become wise? Notice. Without them, cities could not be established, and men can neither live, can neither live, uh, surjoin or stay, nor live there. Yet they are not sought out for the counsel of people. Okay, because they're working. But if you want to make a pottery, who are you going to go to? A potter. Okay, if you're going to fix a piece of iron that's broken, you're going to go to a blacksmith. Okay, and they're all of need. They're all needed. Nor do they attain eminence in the public assembly. They do not sit in the judge's seat, nor do they understand the the sentence of judgment. They cannot expound discipline discipline or judgment and they are not found using proverbs okay we know proverbs are wise sayings but they keep stable the fabric of the world in this case and or the earth and their prayer is in the patient in the practice of their trade see that's what their prayer is is in the practice of their trade we're going to go ahead and stop it there even though this is going to continue on. And again, if you want to be wise, you got to be studying in the Word. You can't be trying to do all these other things and do the Word at the same time. Okay. So, if you have not yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, please go subscribe. Okay? We've got another new subscriber. Praise Yahuwah. We're at 123 subscribers now. We're still trying to get to that 200 mark. So, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. And then if you like the video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Not on Facebook, on YouTube. And then share it to your Facebook page. A lot of people give it like on Facebook, and that's good. We appreciate it. But we need it on YouTube. And then if, and then if you, before you leave, after you subscribed and shared it, hit that notification bell so you get notified of our next video. And we'll be doing part two next. We'll be here at 1 o'clock. It's only about 20 minutes to 12 right now. To do that, the the uh, Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want, part two. And again, may Yahuwah bless until we meet again.